Hola and welcome to Mexico City Airport. I'm here in Terminal 1 because today I'm traveling on Iberia's A350 brand new business class product. Now this is the brand new suite with doors. Follow me as I check it out in all its glory. So my flight today is from Mexico City to Madrid, which will take approximately 10 hours. I start the journey in Terminal 1, which isn't Mexico City's best terminal, it's just a little bit tired. The airline's counters are situated at the end of the terminal, which was a little chaotic, as is always the case with Latin American airports. Iberia's check-in is easily identifiable thanks to the large red screens in the corner of the check-in area, which includes a dedicated business class check-in line. The process was quick and unremarkable, but top tip, instead of joining the queue at gate J, head to G, where business class passengers can enjoy fast track even though it's not signposted. From there, it's a quick trip through duty-free and down the escalators to the main lounges. Now, Iberia invites business class passengers to use the Grand Lounge Elite. It's a fairly simply appointed lounge across two floors and, well, it's also pretty tiny. There's an a la carte food selection as well as buffet spread, but it's all simple fare. There is a bar though, but it just didn't whet our appetite, so we decided to head to the American Airlines Admiral's Lounge, which we could also access being a one world flight. Okay, so once you get past the depressing sea of mahogany wood, the Admiral's Club upstairs is spacious, quiet, and there's plenty of seating. There are also two views, one inside the terminal and the other more impressive one across the main runway of Mexico City. There isn't an a la carte menu, but there is a semi-decent buffet spread, snacks and the tendered bar meant cocktails were easy to come by if you wanted them. But these certainly aren't as impressive lounge offerings as the ones Iberia has in its home base at Madrid. So as our A350 came in to land, it might be useful to say that if you're currently looking for the new Iberia product, it's operating mainly on the Latin American routes, and Mexico City is a definite. With up to three flights a day, there's plenty of options to experience the product on this exact route. With the plane now cleaned and prepped for boarding, I headed down to the gate. Mexico City's Terminal 1 is basically a long corridor and it's not that spacious, so for these larger jets everything can get a little crowded. But the teams pen the groups into different areas to maximise the space, with Group 1 for business class and elite card members clearly marked at the front of the gate. They weren't fully ready on time to board, so after about 10 minutes waiting at the gate, they started to get everyone on, starting with those needing a little extra help and then followed by business class passengers. Now, on boarding the aircraft, it is certainly more impressive boarding from the L2 door, as when you turn left, you are greeted by a sea of red screens, which are the only pop of color in an otherwise very neutral cabin. The noticeable upgrade for Iberia is that the seats have doors. Otherwise, it's the same one by two by one seating configuration that Iberia uses across the rest of its wide-bodied fleet. There are some nice touches, such as the wooden veneer tabletops, which help remove the otherwise sterile nature of the cabin, and the textured seat fabric helps create depth in the overall finish.
but the doors do feel very utilitarian. Although the projection of the seat numbers on the floor is a lovely touch, especially when finding your way through the cabin at night. The seats feel spacious, but narrower than their predecessor, and this is a perfectly comfortable space for a long haul flight. When reclined, the seat turns into a lengthy bed and the footwell, while tight, doesn't feel restrictive. The centre seats also have an electronic seat divider which, when combined with the door, allows for more privacy should you be travelling alone. On boarding, the crew were full of life and actively came round to offer drinks and menus for the flight ahead. As I settled in, I took a look around my seat. There's a small literature pocket at the floor and seat controls, which sadly were easy to knock and activate when relaxing. There's a basic controller as well with a trackpad, along with USB and USB-C charging and M-Power. A nice, surprising additional bolt of red is seen on opening the personal storage, which housed these pretty decent noise-cancelling headphones, as well as this rather muted amenity kit, featuring Germain de Cappuccini amenities. I also really like the pattern inside the kit. The table pulls from below the screen and it's huge. It's also foldable, meaning outside of meal service, it can act as a cocktail table, allowing for easy egress out of your seat. There's a coat hook and either side of this seat, these foldable armrests, which somehow just feel a little bit of an afterthought and not an integral design element when the seat was originally conceived. And I have no idea what this shelf is for. But this is genius. It's a multi-purpose bolster, pillow and mattress topper that allows for passengers to get comfortable in multiple ways. Now settled, I took a look at the menu. It was great to see such a variety of Spanish wines on offer. Just before pushing back, our main course orders were taken, meaning that after the fun, if not fairly obvious, themed safety demonstration was played, I could check out the IFE on offer.
I have to give it to Iberia. There are a lot of movie options on offer, albeit slightly less when it came to TV shows. But the ARC in-flight map was certainly entertainment enough for many. And if you do get the chance, do try the Monopoly game on offer as well. After takeoff, the lights were brought up in soft tones and hot towels were served. No more than 15 minutes after takeoff, the service began. I opted for the fish ceviche, which was delivered on a tray with the tablecloth. While I like the tableware design, these Las Meninas salt and pepper pots, a nod to Spanish painter Velazquez, are a fun and humorous touch. My beef tenderloin was actually really well cooked and the sauces were rich and the perfect accompaniment. The salmon dish was also perfectly cooked too. These are two very difficult dishes to get right in an aircraft oven. The service was actually excellent with very attentive crew the whole way through. And thanks to the divider, it was easy to share dishes with a traveling companion. The star of the show was this chocolate slice, which was accompanied by a delightfully smooth and sweet muscatel. After dinner, teas, coffees and chocolates were offered before everyone got some sleep. But just before that, I popped back to check out the toilets, which were basically stocked, but clean. After placing the mattress topper and converting the seat into a bed, the mood lights continued their color-changing approach to a darker cabin, simulating the sunset on board. After snuggling up and completing my movie, it was time to get some shut-eye. Waking some two hours before landing, I realized I got a pretty decent sleep on board.
after waking, I was served the second meal, which was pretty standard fare, either being offered an omelette with sausage, mushrooms and tomatoes, or the pancakes with a fruit coulis. After my Air France coffee disaster, I was pleased to see these decent brews served, which I continued to enjoy after the service was finished. About an hour before landing, the crew slowly got the cabin ready, and as we started to make our way over Madrid and watch the views out of the window, I was left contemplating my flight. For me, Iberia has been a bit of a hit and miss airline. There was both fleet and crew inconsistencies in the past. But this new cabin pitches the airline at a certain level. Business class is a practical, effortless experience. Everything works and the seats are comfortable. The airline wanted to create a sense of home on board, and have they done that? Well, yes and no. The materials and neutral colours certainly evoke residential touches, but does it feel homely? Sadly, there's almost a two-paired-back approach to the cabin that misses some of the flair, colour and drama that Spain does so well. Smaller elements such as new colourful menus, brighter amenity kits and blankets, and better use of the mood lighting on boarding will inject some of that vibrancy we were hoping to experience. But those are polishing touches on an otherwise perfectly enjoyable flight. It didn't rock my world, but I wouldn't think twice about flying this product again. Once again, thank you for following my report. Please do let me know what you think of the experience. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe, share and get involved. Until the next time, safe flying.